Good afternoon and thanks for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. The Vermont Department of Health estimates that one in three adults in the state has pre-diabetes, but only 10% of them has been diagnosed. To begin today's program, we're going to learn about a research study at UVM that is looking for volunteers who have pre-diabetes. One of the members of the research study team is Victoria Teermina. Victoria is a PhD candidate in UVM's Animal Nutrition and Food Sciences program. Um, so Victoria, why is this, uh, what is this research study all about? Yeah, so the purpose of our research study is to learn if consuming full fat yogurt has a positive effect on blood sugar in people that are at risk of developing type two diabetes. Now we're starting to see evidence that dairy fat may have protective effects against type, developing type two diabetes. So we're taking a further look at this relationship by comparing the effects of full fat or whole yogurt against um, non-fat yogurt on the risk factors associated with type two diabetes. Hmm. And, and so touch on the importance of diabetes related research in general. Of course. So. Diabetes is the seventh leading cause of death in the United States. And over the past 20 years, the a number of people with diabetes has tripled. And so what we focus on in our study is pre-diabetes. So this is where blood sugar levels are slightly higher than normal, but not to the point of the diabetes uh, diagnosis. Mm -hmm. And this is important because we've seen that lifestyle changes such as uh, changes in dietary habits can return blood sugar levels to normal ranges, therefore preventing or delaying type 2 diabetes. Uh, terrific. And how will your study work? Yeah, so this is an eight-week consecutive study, um, so consecutive eight weeks, um, where all food and beverages are provided by the Clinical Research Center at the University of Vermont Medical Center in Burlington. So participants need to come to the Clinical Research Center three times a week to pick up food. And then there will be six days throughout the study. Uh, these will be longer days where we do some blood work. And volunteers will be reimbursed for lost time, travel, inconvenience, et cetera, in the amount of $1,000. Okay, so they get all their food and $1,000. So who, who can volunteer? Who are you looking for? Yeah, so we're looking for men and women ages 45 to 75 with prediabetes. So if you know your blood sugar is slightly higher than normal, that's what we're looking for. Um, if you have multiple risk factors, uh, such as history of type, uh, family history, um, we you may qualify as well. Um, we're looking for those with the BMI. This is body mass index between 40, sorry, between 20 and 45. Mm. Uh, and this is a number calculated based off of your height and your weight that your doctor can calculate or you can calculate. Um, we're looking for those who have consistent dietary habits, including dairy and especially yogurt, because that's the main type of dairy that's on our study. Um, and we're looking for those who are available for those eight consecutive weeks. Terrific. And so what does someone need to do if they're interested in volunteering for your study? Yeah, so um, if you're interested, feel free to contact us. Um, our email is foodstudy at uvm.edu. That's F-O-O-D-S-T-U-D-Y at uvm.edu. Or you can call us at 802-656-9422. Again, that's 802-656-9422. Terrific. And, and of course, uh, you know, a checkup with your doctor to make sure you have prediabetes um, is always a good idea anyway. Um, so, Victoria, I want to thank you so much for being with us this afternoon. We'll follow up with you when your study is complete to find out what uh, you've learned. Thanks again. Thank you. So the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium has been informing and delighting visitors for over 130 years. Its collections range from the natural world to curiosities and history. Across the Fence visited the museum a few years ago to learn about this one-of-a-kind Vermont institution. 
located in the heart of downtown St. Johnsbury, is the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium. Founded in 1889 to display the eclectic collection of local industrialist Franklin Fairbanks, the museum's focus is natural history. Franklin Fairbanks himself was a collector, and he was an amateur naturalist. He loved um, exploring and understanding nature, so he collected everything from rocks and minerals to um, bird specimens to eggs. Fairbanks was the nephew of one of the inventors of the Fairbanks scale, which was produced in St. Johnsbury. He inherited a fortune, as well as an interest in philanthropy. Establishing the museum was one way to share his love of learning and nature. He also did things like he kept meticulous uh, weather records. He recorded temperatures and um, wind speed and made observations about things like when strawberries were um, uh, growing in his field. Um, so he was, he was a great observer. Built in the Victorian style that was popular in the late 1800s, the building is listed on the National Historic Register. The collection inside also reflects the Victorian era in which most of it was gathered. The core collections are full habitat dioramas of animals in the wild, so you can see them up close. The taxidermist, William Balsh, did a absolutely brilliant job um, placing those animals in family situations, so you might see how, what they eat, how they communicate, how they take care of each other, what their nests look like. For example, in one of his earliest dioramas, at, um, Flamingos, uh, there's an egg and a juvenile and then a, an adult and a, um, an aging flamingo all in the same grouping, and it's really a chance to see them all together. The intention was to widen the horizons for museum visitors by giving them a chance to see these wonders from far away. Along with the objects and artifacts on display, the museum also houses cultural items from around the world. The items that were brought here were picked up by the Fairbanks family or by representatives of the scale company when they traveled around the world. Um, there's an alcove dedicated to Egypt. There's one uh, with items from different parts of Europe. There are um, items from um, islands in the Pacific. And they're, they're not complete representations of any one part of the world, but they're pieces that were picked up by, by uh, very uh, specific travel, and um, they represent what was interesting at the time. Nearby is a series of artworks whose medium is one of the most unusual you'll find anywhere, representing the Victorian fascination with animals, shapes, and collecting. These images require viewers to take a closer look. We have these lovely mosaics that were um, put together by a man named John Hampson. And then I asked people to get up close and sort of take a look and, and see if they can tell me what they're made of. And usually after about 10 seconds, um, you'll get a response. And that response is because these mosaics are actually made by um, pinning thousands and thousands of beetles and moths on a surface in patterns and designs that were pleasing to the artist who made them. That's right. This is bug art, and the Fairbanks owns the entire collection. Along with the emphasis on the natural world around us, the museum encourages visitors to look up. The Fairbanks has a team of meteorologists on site and is home to the only planetarium in the state. There are things that happen in the sky that, well, I guess maybe it just surprises people if they haven't necessarily noticed it before. Mark Breen is one of the meteorologists at the Fairbanks. Oh, it's cold. He also serves as a tour guide to the cosmos for the planetarium's visitors. It's such a genuine experience. I mean, you know, you describing about this particular constellation that you'll see this evening at seven o'clock, or this is, you know, certain planets are out tonight, or uh, the moon's gonna be moving through a certain, you know, constellation or next to a planet. Breen says that keeping track of Vermont's complicated weather is a unique challenge. Sometimes people ask me, is, is there really such a thing as Vermont weather? You know, is it, is it different than, you know, New Hampshire weather or something like that? And, uh, really, the key thing about our weather, and what I find 
I think keeps it fascinating for me, I mean, I've been doing this for 35 years, is that our mountains and valleys and, and how they're arranged and how weather systems come up along the coastline or they come out of Canada or off the Great Lakes, all of those different things kind of create unique weather really just from one spot to the other. It, it, you, I wouldn't even say from one town to the other because within the same town, um, there'll be a situation where it's sunny in one place and it's snowing like crazy in another, and, or in the summer, you'll be a thunderstorm and it only hits one spot and not another. The Fairbanks has educational programs for students of all ages, as well as their own nature-based preschool. One of the um, best kept secrets of this museum is that it is an active teaching museum. So we have partnerships with the schools in this area and we have a really phenomenal team of educators that go and um, they work with teachers and students throughout the year. Students in kindergarten through eighth grade get delivering science classes. It's a chance for visitors to explore the natural world, from the smallest bugs to the largest planets. Whenever I come here, I find something new, and I've been here many years now. <laughs> but there's still things that I hadn't seen before and things to discover. Bringing the wonders of the world to Vermont's Northeast Kingdom, the Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium invites guests to begin their journey of discovery right here in St. Johnsbury. I'm Rebecca Gollin with Across the Fence. I just love the Fairbanks Museum, it's wonderful. And for those of you that might have been interested in the pre-diabetes study that we talked about earlier, I have some that information I'm gonna let you know again. Um, qualified participants will be ages 45 to 75 with pre-diabetes. Your BMI should be between 20 and 45. You should have consistent dietary habits, including dairy, uh, and be available for eight consecutive weeks. Um, you get $1,000 um, to complete the study uh, and all food is provided to you. So again, that's for the, um, the diabetes study. You can go to foodstudy at uvm.edu to find more or you can call them at 802-656-9422. And that's our program for today. Once again, thank you for joining us Across the Fence. I'm Fran Stoddard. Stay well. Mm -hmm.